Thank you very much, Professor Nara, for your kind introduction. It is a great pleasure to co-organize this uh, kind of international workshop on what is creativity in cooperation with IQCAM, APCTP, and Hasbro Foundation. We are also very pleased to pronounce that uh, proceedings will be published through uh, so widely into year is a tentative title of uh, uh, the and hidden dynamics. My talk consists of four parts. Starting from a brief overview, I will discuss problems of uh, what is done in three different contexts. In the overview, I will mention how opposition conflicts and contradictions can be driving forces of creativity. Last October, we organized the International and Interdisciplinary Symposium on What is Life. This is a part of continuous regulation of HDQ powers first. The proceeding just appeared in this summer, which contains almost 30 original papers. You can predict the presence of new kind of elementary particles called mesons, by which he became the first Nobel Prize winner as Japanese. Then, Yukawa Institute was developed at Kyoto University in the 1950s. This October, Professor Toshihide Masukawa became another Nobel Prize winner as with three other Japanese. He is a former director of Yukawa Institute. This is a great moment in understanding the problem of what is creativity. It is a Niels Bohr's complementarity principle that must be a revolutionary concept in modern physics. From a classical theory, particle phenomena and bell phenomena are mutually contradictory. From quantum theory, however, they are very the different aspects of the same phenomena. Let us consider the same diagram in the in different way. Suppose that there are known particles and a strongly unified theory, although there are some contradictions between them. Yukawa did not try to uh, solve uh, to solve this contradiction, Yukawa did not try to modify unified theory, but instead he predicted quite unknown particles named Mason. Likewise, Maskawa predicted different elementary particles called quarks instead of challenging the unified theory. No matter how, how different are the details, complementarity can be a powerful tool for creativity. Complementarity has also attracted many artists as well because of its visual symmetry. Dutch artist Escher tried to demonstrate the complementarity based on understandable patterns. He first drew a single motif and its mirror image in order to uh, fill out two-dimensional space. If you are looking at red patterns, the surrounding blue ones are background and vice versa. He then tried to demonstrate the double meanings of complementarity based on optimist, uh, two motifs. One is optimist and another is pessimist. He finally tried to create the nature of infinity by making circles. Actually, two motifs are working and meet at the center and shake hands with each other. This must be a super complementarity. Just like Isha tried to view out the two-dimensional space based on understandable patterns, scientists try to fill out the empirical space through the evolution of theories. 
This is a simple generalization of Niels Bohr's complementarity principle. I found this design from the book written by developmental psychologist John Piaget. He also tried to understand how we obtain the number, concept of number through our development. There is a critical period around seven years old. Before this critical period, children knew only individual neural numbers less than seven. After this critical period, children suddenly acquired the knowledge of number, the, the concept of number based on complementarity of equality and inequality. What we acquire is not the knowledge of infinite numbers, but the constructive way how to define the infinite numbers. There must be common uh, principles behind evolution and development in general. Along this line, perhaps, Professor Mark Rambam will discuss the topics of developmental anomalies in more detailed context. When I complete this diagram and press it vertically, we may have three-dimensional spiral patterns between objective X world and subjective uh, M system. I call this index circulation. There are two opposed planes denoted by yellow and red colors. Projecting three-dimensional features onto each plane, we may have two different patterns. In the Eastern world, many attractive patterns have been drawn again and again. They are called mandalas. Mandalas can be a symbol of com complementarity. Mandala on this side is called uh, taizokai, which represents female. I think this corresponds to the vertical yellow plane of the previous slide. Psychologically, this represent the structure of unconsciousness. Mandala on the other side is called Kongotai, uh, which represents male. I think this corresponds to the horizontal red frame of the previous slide. There are successive patterns in this symbol, which means that evolution and development can take place as time proceeds, so this wonder can represent the dynamical process of consciousness. Psychologist uh, Carl Gustav Jung has been very interested in these wonders because these are the, the powerful tools for curing psychologically ill persons. Connection of oppositions is his very famous book. Perhaps Professor Harold Atman's paper will give a talk about the role of unconsciousness in addition to the consciousness uh, for creativity. And that the circulation in my time may be a universal process among diverse life phenomena, such as the origin of life, the present day uh, cellular processes, and even a pattern recognition of and associated with dots as a pattern of life on the horse in this case through so called closure, which is associated with exo end of transition. The successive uh, alternate association and dissociation must be a powerful uh, tool for creating new macromolecules. Professor Ludwig Leiter made self-healing macromolecules through an inspiration of biomolecular architecture. Now for the second part, where I will discuss creativity and the emergence of order out of chaos. There was a long-standing problem. How does the sperm fragile show based to the regular than propagation. It was well known that local striding can generate local bending, although the underlying mechanisms were unclear. A breakthrough was brought about by considering oppositions or 
the exception. Actually, in some problems, two waves are propagating in opposite direction and do not initiate on collision. In another known problem, different sections show different wave uh, frequencies with different wave lengths leading to rather complex spatial temporal irregularity. Starting from moment balance equation, we can derive post-order partial differential equations, although I will skip details in mathematics. For the pyramid to slide back and forth, shear force capital S must be specified by the proposed WL potentials with hysteresis switching functions. For delta considerations, I will introduce intra subsystem conflict by this symbol to represent opposed units. Second order and fourth order partial directed terms represent nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor interaction. Fourth order term can stabilize the system, whereas the second order term destabilizes it, leading to another sort of conflict represented by inter subsystem conflict by using by this symbol. In some problem, as you can see, typical base band propagation can be observed, but the direction is suddenly reversed. Although the laser electrification was applied to dissect the trigon from the structural body, this is not important for the reversal of band propagation. The computer simulation shows light band propagation in response to a single stimulus applied at the left end. The resultant event are bounded at both boundaries leading to rather complex behavior. Such complex behavior resembles the motion of long platinum as I mentioned before. Actually, two waves propagating in opposite directions can pass through on collision like solitons. The problem arose is how does the nature can control the intrinsic instability? One solution can be achieved by reducing the total length of the fragment. Then, as you can see, the model system shows rather regular patterns, although the direction is still reversed. So the remaining question is how, the, how can we control the direction as well? I suddenly realized that the fragment must not be the homogeneous system, but instead the homogeneous state. Uh, structure. When I introduce a passive region of some critical lens, then the model system shows regular best equipment when propagation. From a point of view of theoretical physics, the resultant model system can be a type of hybrid dynamical systems with on and off state. From a point of view of metaphysics, Intrinsic instability can be regulated by imposing supra conflicts or trans subsystem conflicts, in this case, represented by this symbol. In real problem generating rather regular best dependent propagation has inhomogeneous inter inter uh, internal structure. Please remember, there are intra subsystem conflict, inter-subsystem conflict, and trans-subsystem conflict. When we combine all these symbols together, we have this whole pattern. Now, creativity can be understood as the emergence of order out of intrinsic chaos through a transition from exo in the form of opposed units to the end in the form of their synthesis. Now go to the third part, where I discuss creativity as the rediscovery of all concepts in new context. This is a Charles Darwin's natural selection theory that has been rediscovered several times through the evolution of science. There are positions of life and death at the level of component. Charles Darwin try to understand the origin of species in ecosystems. Almost 100 years later, 
while it is burning, try to understand the origin of the new cells which can attack the invading antigen in the immune system. Irrespective of the detailed skills that common principle of natural selection can be rediscovered, natural selection can be conducted by three steps. First, there is a pre-existing variability at the level of components such as organisms and cells. Second, they are encountered with environment. And finally, the adapted plant shows proliferation. <coughs> Surprisingly, after almost 20 years, the same mechanism can be rediscovered as the theory of cancer evolution. After another 20 years, I proposed the intracellular selection theory in order to understand Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. In non-dividing cells, there are so many different kinds of proteins, some of which has two opposed conformations, one is normal, another is abnormal. When the abnormal protein has enzymatic ability to transform the normal one to the abnormal one, accumulation of denatured protein occurs leading to the concept of prion disease or Alzheimer's disease. I suggested that such process may be conducted by natural selection. Cancer and Alzheimer's disease are the hallmark of aging and both are microevolutionary process. So in the paper I emphasize that Seemingly opposite phenomena, aging and evolution, are very, like, very likely different aspects of the same biological process. This must be complementarity principle in biology. In other words, the same process has a double-edged sword. In addition, I emphasize that the presence, uh, there is the scale invariant principle because the same principle of natural selection can be rediscovered at different contexts. From a point of view of meta-recognition, the process of rediscovery of Charles Darwin's natural selection can be understood from a from transition, uh, through a transition from exo-worlds to the system through the evolution of science. Interestingly, the similar pattern can be, can be found about the accretion of natural language. There are critical periods around 2 to 12 years old. During such critical periods, we human beings can acquire the natural, natural language. No Chomsky calls such intrinsic ability generative grammar. Professor Singer Miena will discuss the, the linguistic system along this line. As an extension, Professor Adrian Chell will discuss the nature of communication through co-space of physical and virtual world. Now for the final section where I will discuss creativity as the emergence of hidden dynamics is a double-edged sword. Beyond complementarity principle, Japanese philosopher Hikaru Nishida generated a concept of absolutely contradictory self-identity, as it is very important to take into account successive oppositions. The, we should never forget to consider about the entire opposition of wholeness. Then the total system must have quite self-singular structure. This concept is very important because we usually consider only ideal case. Of course, without any environmental pollution, for instance, about the development of psychology, children can do this kind of figures. But when the environmental pollution is present due to man-made chemicals, children never do important by meaningful figures. This must be another inconvenient truth next to global warming. 
I'm afraid that electromagnetic field pollution can be the additional problem of this environmental pollution. The upper bound shows us natural electromagnetic fields. Please look at extremely low frequency fields. These fields contain much more complex patterns with several peaks whose wavelengths are in resonant relationship with Earth's size. Human planes, such as Alpha, Beta, and Theta, are sh sharply uh, separated by each peak, which means that our human brain activity must be influenced by the dust and electromagnetic fields. At the present day, the lower panel shows continuous spectrum due to man-made electromagnetic fields. It must be superimposed on natural fields. There appear a new disease called hypersensitivity, probably due to environmental pollution. William Lee is a medical doctor. He himself has a chemical sensitivity syndrome and wrote several books. And he reported another sensitivity due to electromagnetic fields. Actual expansion required the ceiling close to protect environmental fields. The causes and the underlying mechanism, unfortunately, are quite unclear. These are the hidden problems. Two are not such hidden problems. We have to specify the fundamental signal transaction pathway. We human beings usually have almost 200 different kinds of cell types, such as nerve cell, muscle cell, human cell, and so on. Despite diversity of such cell types and despite diversity of stimuli, the common signal transfer uh, action has been identified. For example, exogenous factors such as carbon or hodoran or endogenous factors such as noradrenaline or acetylcholine, known as nerve transmitters, these can be a stimulus thus for particular cell type. In addition, there are two different kinds of nonlinear, so-called nonlinear responsiveness. One is amplification, by which that very weak stimulus can be amplified through several steps. Second is the transition from so-called depth of the angle. I mean, from a straightforward linear signal transduction pathway to loop. This can be responsible for memory formation, as I will discuss below. Let us consider Pavlovian conditioning on associative memory formation. Generally, nerve cell shows acute responsiveness with non-genomic action in the time scale of the order of second after minute, due to the ionic change around the membrane. Now, when two different stimuli apply, Precisely at some time intervals, what will happen after several trials? Now, cell shows chronic responsiveness with genomic action by which signal transduction reaches a nucleus where the expression occurs. As a result, new protein is produced, which can uh, translocate to the cellular membrane. Then, the constitution of cellular membrane. The reconstitution of cellular membrane occurs. As a result, response transfer occurs from unconditioning to conditioning stimuli. The point is the transition from exothermic system, as I mentioned before, and this must be the important point for associated memory formation. Then consider, let us consider the second case. Suppose that a single stimulus tried twice instead of two different stimuli. 
what will happen? This is the resting state without any stimulus. The first stimulus can evoke the uh, translocation of protein leading to normal responsiveness. If such translocated protein is stable enough for a while, the constitution of membrane is restored leading to a memorized state. At this state, if the signal stimulus is applied, the enhancement of the responsiveness suddenly appears. I think this must be a sort of hypersensitivity. For example, this panel shows a uh, human brain wave recorded from four different sites. Light flashing at 10 Hz was applied only for two seconds. Even after turning off the stimulus, the brain wave started to syn synchronize leading to a seizure of so-called photosensitive epilepsy. The important point, the same mechanism that is responsible for memory formation can now cause a seizure of photosensitive epilepsy. In other words, there must be a double-edged sword at the level of creativity. This is an important point. Now, for instance, the side case. In this case, stimulus is present constantly, but with a very weak level. Instead of temporal change, what will happen? This is a normal response to the stimulus. But such normal response is not good for our health, like allergy due to cedar falling, occurring in every stream. We may take medicine to protect such normal responsiveness, then we may feel we may feel better because the normal responsiveness is inhibited. However, as long as the stimulus is present, another translocation can be triggered leading to the restoring of normal responsiveness, which can be called cellular tolerance. What is worse, the activity of medicine is no longer stable enough, then suddenly, Another translocation can occur leading to enhanced responsiveness. This must be another sort of hypersensitivity. Although the stimulus pattern is completely different from previous case. Since we human beings have very complex internal or, uh, structure, functional complexity, so different, quite different mechanisms can be predicted to account for hypersensitivity. We used to consider brain can respond to external stimuli, but this is not always the case. Brain can also respond to internal stimuli. Here again, we have the transition from linear to root for so-called exo-endo transition. Indeed, adrenal cortex produce hormone which inhibit the brain activity through blood circulation. So our brain activity is completely depending on body's activity. For instance, adrenal cortex is low, then the hormone level is low. Since very big inhibition occurs at the level of the brain, this leads to enhanced sensing of signals leading to hypersensitivity. Although the underlying mechanism is quite different from previous cases. On the other, on the contrary, when the adrenal cortex activity is high, since strong inhibition occurs at the level of brain, which goes to doing of the sense known as Cousin's syndrome. So the role of adrenal cortex resembles the role of passive region of the fragile. Now let us conclude my talk by this slide. I think that creativity must be the exo and transition, no matter how different are the details in individual cases. Three important features can be summarized. First, creativity 
it may appear proposed phenomena such as memory information and hypersensitivity, although they can be defined as the emergence of hidden dynamics through the interplay between external stability and internal properties. Second, creativity can be found at various uh, uh, phenomena such as the acquisition of natural language, acquisition of number concepts, and even breakthroughs in studies during development and or evolution of individuals and or science. Finally, creativity can be defined as the emergence of order out of intrinsic instability by imposing supra conflicts such as the first religion of the tribe. Nature can always escape from scientific and hence uh, consciousness description. Meta science or unconsciousness mind can compensate for, for such a lack of fruit description. I strongly hope that the present workshop will stimulate our discussions about advancement in our studies in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>